If you missed my first video about five features of MuseScore 4 that I'm excited about, you might want to check that out first. There's a link in the description. MuseScore 4 is still in development, and it's great to see some of the improvements that the team has been making. So, here are five more features that I'm excited to use. Working with parts is an important part of any multi-instrument score. In MuseScore 3, this was a complex dialogue almost hidden away in the file menu. Now in MuseScore 4, it's easily accessible and user-friendly. The Parts section allows quick opening and closing of individual parts, or you can open all of the parts at once. And of course, these parts are transposed if the instrument is a transposing instrument. In the Parts dialog, we can also make new parts that have multiple instruments together, for example, two percussion instruments in one part, or all of the strings. We can then use the handy new Instruments panel to show or hide which instruments we want in that part. In my previous video, I mentioned some of the great improvements to the main Note Input toolbar, but I didn't mention that it's also easily customizable. This makes it quick to remove elements that you don't use often, or bring them back for a project that needs them. So I'll remove double flats and sharps, but I'll add crossed off beaming for this project, leave voice 3 and 4 out, and take out 64th notes too. That leaves me with a toolbar that is only what I need it to be. See this slightly vague plus button? Everything that was in the add menu has been placed in this plus button, or in the tuplets button, which means less regular reaching for those top menus, and hopefully they can be removed completely in time. In band or orchestra parts, it is quite common to have repeated bars, and instead of copying each bar, we use the repeat bar symbol. This was already a feature in MuseScore 3, but the repeat two bars symbol has been added in MuseScore 4, which had a very frustrating workaround in MuseScore 3. Playback doesn't work yet, but I know that it has been reported and will be addressed soon. Also in my previous video, I told you about the Properties panel, which is replacing the inspector. It has a couple of other features that are worth mentioning. When you don't have anything selected, the Properties panel gives you handy shortcuts for some properties of your score. So we can show or hide empty staves, useful for condensing big sparse scores. We can also choose to show or hide invisible elements, the page margins, frames of text elements, and formatting marks. So you can choose between more information about the score or seeing the final result. Also in the Properties panel are shortcuts to two commonly used dialogues when working with music notation the page settings, and style settings. Page settings is where you find the scaling setting, something I would like to see duplicated on that properties panel, since it's so commonly needed. And style settings is where we change the font, customize the spacing, or define how bar numbers should be displayed. In MuseScore 3, it could be very annoying trying to select a whole bar by clicking in an empty space, particularly if that bar was quite full of music, or you were zoomed out looking at the bigger picture. In MuseScore 4, they fixed this, so you're more likely to select the whole bar than keep swapping between selected notes. I can't tell you how frustrating that was. MuseScore is open source software, and that means anyone can get involved. That doesn't mean, though, that you need to know how to code. There are other ways to help. One of the best ways users can help is by reporting any bugs that you come across while you're using the software especially if you're using the newest version. You can do this on the MuseScore forums, or better yet, if you have a GitHub account, do it on the MuseScore GitHub page. While you're on the GitHub page, this is also a great place to keep track of progress on existing issues and to see what's coming next. The Projects tab shows how the development is organized, and we can see that the Alpha 2, the public Alpha, is getting pretty close to being released. In the meantime, you can still download and try out MuseScore 4 from the Development Build section of the Downloads page. Just make sure that you have your old scores backed up before opening them in MuseScore 4. These development builds are not intended for large-scale use yet, and there is no telling what they might do to your scores. There are still so many new features and small improvements that are going to make MuseScore 4 a fantastic piece of music notation software. I'll be sure to keep you updated on some of them as I see them.